good evening. How are you guys doing? I was tired when I just left the house and I'm a little bit woken up now. I uh, stopped and got gas and I was listening to a little Christmas music. I was like, okay, get into the mode, the vlogging, the vlogmas mode. Is this a, is this vlogmas? Um, I get into the vlogmas mode a little bit and uh, Now I'm a little bit more awake. I was tired though, I was so exhausted earlier and I laid down for a little bit when Alex went to bed. Um, so let me tell you about <laughs> our day today. I thought I was gonna get so much done today. And um, so I got up this morning and um, like Alex was still around and I go, I, he had to go into work late today. Um, but the person that he works with today, she was sick. And so she was like, uh, you know, and he was like, well, I could go in and get some stuff done, but I think I'm just gonna stay at home today because Fufu, my brother-in-law, was flying in at four o'clock. And so Alex was gonna get off work anyway. So he was just gonna meet with his mom early. Well, he did just meet with his mom early. And then they went to the airport with Carlos. And um, when Fufu got in, so I went and ran some errands, some stuff that I had to do, and then Alex, uh, by that point, we kind of like just got up and hung around the house together because we don't get to do that very often th throughout the week. And then um, he started getting ready to go meet with his mom, and uh, he was playing music and stuff, and I was gonna film videos, and I thought, I'll just wait till he's gone, and then I'll film videos. Well. <clears throat> I didn't realize that we were having dinner so early tonight. So by the time that I got back, it was like 3.30 and um, he had just left um, to go meet his mom. They were gonna like meet by our house and then Alex was gonna drive down there because we were having dinner at Maggiano's up here. And um, so by that point, I had like made this video for my Peter Mon channel. I don't know if you saw it today. <laughs> Um, but it was like a Snapchat filter thing and I did it in the parking lot over here So I came home and I had to like put all those pieces together and then upload that and then Alex was like um, Fufu's plane's gonna be in for in a second and then we're gonna like head up north and I was like oh my god It's so early and I wanted to make all these videos So I said okay I'll jump in the shower and I jumped in the shower and by the time I got out of the shower and I was like got, got my hair done because I was going to get ready and then I was going to film like my booktube video, my Peterisms video. Um, Alex texted me and he was like, we're on our way on the, to the north side already. And I was like, oh my God. So I just got dressed and then I went and met them there real early. And we went to Maggiano's. It was packed. Oh my God, Maggiano's was so packed tonight. And um, I couldn't even park in the parking lot. I had to like park in the, like, in the mall parking lot next to it. And... Um, I think there was like a lot of Christmas parties or something there because it seemed like every table was like 10 plus people. So it was Alex and I and Fufu and his mom and then Sarah, Alex's best friend because she's known Fufu forever too. So that we uh, all had dinner and it was really nice. And then Sarah went home and then we went over to my mother-in-law's house or apartment and um, Carlos and, well, Carlos came late because he had to work late. Liliana and the kids were over there when I got there. And, um, let's see what else. Because I ran home to let the dogs out. And so I got there like the half an hour later than everybody else. And then we kind of just sat around and stuff. And then, um, Carlos and his friend showed up. And we, that was it. <laughs> And then we sang happy birthday to Alex's brother. Um, do you guys want to see what that looks like? Okay, I'm going to try to include it because I recorded it on my phone. So um, here, I'm going to stop it and then I'll include it.
meant to bring my vlogging camera into the apartment, but I didn't. So that's what it looks like. It used to be like 30 of us, but now it's not so many because the family, you know, is smaller and grandma's gone and, and you know, everybody's gone. And so, but that was Fufu's uh, happy birthday. And he was very insistent at Maggiano's that he did not want us to sing happy birthday to him. And his mom tried to anyway. But anyway, we had a good night. It was fun. And we sat around, but we didn't leave there till like 1045. And then we got home and... I took the dogs out and did all that. And um, then Alex was talking to his grandma and Maya on the phone upstairs. And I got into bed and I like, I told him, I said, I have got to lay down for like a half an hour or so. I said, I'm just, I don't know that I can go right. I mean, if I had left right then to go vlog, I was like, so like half asleep. And it didn't, you know, help that the dogs were just like so cozy around me and our house was warm and toasty and there's snow everywhere on the ground and it's cold outside. So, um, but that was at about, I don't know. So I slept until about 12 something and it's like 1 15 now, I think. So anyway, yeah, that was it. That was my day. It seemed like it went really, really quick. I was gonna skip dinner and film videos, and I thought, you know what? It is more important for me to spend time with the family. And as much as I love making videos, videos can wait till tomorrow. Um, but then tomorrow, I have a bunch of stuff I have to do too, and we're supposed to go out to dinner again. With this going out to dinner stuff while being on a diet is killing me. It is really hard. And we're going out to dinner with Melissa and Jason tomorrow. I don't know where we're going to dinner, but if we go somewhere like Cheesecake Factory, I think it'll be okay for me. Because what I'll do is I'll just get a protein, um, not a protein burger, I'll get like a veggie burger, and then I just won't get any bread on it, and that's just what I'll have is a veggie burger. Um, and I think that should be probably pretty easy for me. So, we'll see. But yeah, and then I have a bunch of stuff I have to do in the afternoon tomorrow. Um, so, I don't know, like, when I'm gonna get my stuff. <laughs> I need like an entire day just for, I mean, I've had, I, of course I've had them, you know, this week, but like, you know, today I had all this stuff, then Tuesday I had the meeting in the evening and, so, Monday I pretty much had a day to myself, I guess. But I just need a day where I can sit down and, you know, respond to a bunch of emails that I need to respond to. And, um, I mean, I'm so behind on emails right now. And I want to write. I haven't written in a couple days. And one of these nights I need to get my ass to the gym. But... And then Friday we're going back over to, we're going to Carlos and Liliana's, uh, supposedly at like 7.30 or something. Um, they're having like a get together for, um, for Fufu. I thought he was gonna be in town um, like till Tuesday or something, but he's only gonna be in town till Sunday. That's Friday night. And then Saturday was supposed to be the Pacer game. I don't know if we're still doing the Pacer game or not. Um, that'll be another early thing, because the Pacer game's always, like, I think they typically start pretty early. Um, this cup doesn't want to sit in the sun. I have my Buxom lip plumper in here. Um, and then Alex and Sarah are doing something Sunday night. I don't know what they're doing. They were talking about it at dinner tonight with another friend of theirs from high school. The three of them are going to hang out. So maybe, oh, I was gonna say maybe Tanya and I could hang out, but I think she said she's leaving on, I think she's leaving on Friday to go to Florida for a couple days. Her, one of her really good friend's daughters is graduating from college. I think that's this week, it's either this weekend or next weekend, but I think it's this weekend. Well, if that's the case, Sunday I'll get all kinds of stuff done and then I can do a live stream Sunday night and um, all that. Come hell or high water, I am finishing the Harry Potter book this week. Can I just tell you? Um, I actually got quite a bit of it done last night. I think I have like, like four hours, four or five hours left. So that's not too bad. 
it's gotten really good. I still have to say, at this point, I think Prisoner of Azkaban is my favorite so far. I mean, I, there's not any of them I dislike. You know, the Sorcerer's Stone was really good because it's like your first introduction to Hogwarts and all that kind of stuff. And, um, and I really liked, I liked Chamber of Secrets too. Um, this one just is so long. Like, it just really is long. And then, um, yeah, I was talking to Mel today from the book club. And she and I were trying to pick what the first book for January is going to be. Which I'm very excited about. It's looking like it's gonna be a year of true crime. So, if you like true crime, you should head over and join the book club because we are picking the books out now and they're gonna be fun. And I don't know who recommended this to me. I do think that it was on a blog the other day, but it was called The House of Secrets. And so I looked it up today and I like screenshot it and I sent it to Mel and I was like, what did you think of this? And it was about this father that had, like, his daughter kill their infant child. And then the brother kill, like, the baby's father. And it was all this weirdness. And I was like, um... And it's actually, like, Anne Rule was, like, one of the people that said that this was, like, a really good book. And people said it was well written, too. And I had never heard of it before, um... So I was like, well, maybe that's the first book that we'll read of the year. I don't know. But I also want to read some of the more popular ones. Um, so I'm excited about that. And I was kind of trying to pick some of the holiday books that I want to read this year. I was going through and kind of like trying to pick out some. I need to do that little two video. So I don't know, maybe I can get that done tomorrow. I, part of the problem is, is it's getting so dark early, and then if I'm sitting there filming past 4 o'clock, like, it's completely pitch black in our living room. So, I mean, the shadows and the walls and stuff are just horrible, and it just kind of reminds me of my early days of being on YouTube, which is totally fine, you know, whatever. But, yeah. It's, like, funny sometimes when I, like, look back on, like, the first days that I, um, like, started doing YouTube videos, and it was, you know, on BookTube, and, um, I don't know why this thing won't fit in here. It's driving me crazy. Um, and I was watching, yesterday, I was watching a ton of, like, BookTube videos, and kind of catching up on some of the people that I really like, and... It's so interesting, like, when I was just doing booktube to now, and, like, when you just do booktube, it really, and it still feels this way to me, that, like, the booktube community is, like, this isolated community within YouTube, and, um, that's, like, different and removed from YouTube. It really does feel that way. I don't even know how to explain it. And sometimes in a good way and sometimes maybe, you know, I think like in a way that, like some, there's booktube drama. <laughs> there really is. And it'll be about like, you know, a certain author or whatever. And um, I don't know. It's just, it's such a nice community. And I think that when you look at the rest of YouTube like, in relation to that, it's such kind of a different thing, you know? I think it's very probably, and I'm not saying this jokingly, I really mean this, I think it's probably very similar to, like, the Candle community or whatever, you know? I mean, I'm not comparing, like, people's love of book and readings to Candles, but to some degree, you know, it's like, it's just all out of this love and this passion, and, like, I think that's really, like, where the beauty influencer community started, and I think that it became this, like, self-created monster at some degree or at some point where, um, you know, these beauty influencers got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. 
to where they were kind of like entities of their own and then there was like this drama that got created out of it and then it's like this frenzy that goes back and forth you know what I mean and I don't know it's just interesting to me you know I mean the gaming community is huge too it was weird I was like talking to Liliana tonight and she said to me, she was like, uh, that Carlitos is really into this, uh, she's like, I said something to her about Santa, because Carlitos, all he wants is a Nintendo Switch. Like, that's all he'll, he's asking for, is a Nintendo Switch, which is really expensive, okay? Especially for Carlos and Liliana that don't have a lot of money, and he's six, let's just be for real, okay? A Nintendo Switch is like two or three hundred dollars. And um, that's all he wants. And so that's, I think, all he'll, he'll get that and probably a couple other little things. But, I mean, I just think it's a lot of money, you know? And so anyway, I said to her, I said, because he was kind of like listing off some of these toys and stuff. And I said, where does he hear about all these toys? Like, just when you guys go to the store or whatever? And she was like, no, he's been watching this YouTuber and he watches him all the time. And I go, who is it? And she goes, his name is Ryan Reviews Toys. And I go, oh my God, I was just talking about this kid yesterday on my YouTube channel. And she goes, why were you talking about him? And I said, he's the highest paid YouTuber of 2018 for Forbes magazine. And she goes, he's like six or seven. And I go, I know. And she goes, oh my, Carlitos and all his friends, that's all they watch, he, they watch is this toys reviews, and then they want every toy that he reviews, you know? And, um, I said, he has his own line of, like, collectibles at Walmart, and she said, I know, Carlitos wants some, and I thought, <laughs> like, it's just this big, you know, game, all of it, isn't it? I said, listen, Liliana, we need to get Carlitos up on the YouTube is what we need to do. She was like, playing with toys? I said, yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, my mother-in-law would not shut up about that Christmas Chronicles on uh, Netflix tonight. Somebody commented and they said, you need to watch Christmas Chronicles. It's been on my list for a couple days. I've been meaning to do that or for like a week. And so tonight when I got back to the house and I was like, while Alex was talking to his abuela and Maya, I was uh, just kind of flipping through Netflix. So I started it. I got like the first 10 minutes in. I, I knew it was going to be one of these real sad movies. Like when Oliver Hudson was at the beginning of it, I like him. When they, he was at the beginning of it, I knew it was going to be real sad. And uh, so I guess he's dead or something. Is that it? And then, I mean, this isn't ruining it for anybody. This is literally the first five or ten minutes. But something about Santa's sleigh crashes or something. I don't know. I read that on the thing. So I'm going to finish it and watch that. Maybe I'll do a review of that on my... Since I said I was going to do all these movie reviews and I haven't done any movie reviews. We haven't had... We haven't been going to the movies on Sunday night. Somebody left me um, a met, like a comment on, I, I don't know if it was my review channel or where it was, and they're like, you haven't reviewed any movies. And I'm like, okay, I don't really know what to do like on a Sunday night. So if I look at Alex and I go, do you want to go to a movie? Because I'll go to a movie any Sunday night, you know? And he's always like, this tree over here is absolutely gorgeous. Oh my God. And, um, and then he's like, no, I don't really feel like it tonight, which is like what's been the case for the last probably three or four weeks. And then I'll say, okay, well, I'll just go by myself then, I guess, because I have to review a movie. I mean, I'm not going to do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> just to review a movie. We have fun going to the movies together, though. There's so many movies I want to watch um, that have recently come out on DVD and you know, that you can download or that are on the cable and all that kind of stuff. There's so many movies I want to watch. I really need to make um, more of an effort of 
like being showered, coffee, everything, like noon, sit down, and you know, like answering emails, get my videos filmed, do all that stuff so that I can spend the rest of the day kind of like, you know, I just always have so many things I have to, places I have to run and stuff like that, you know? Oh, my lord, Carlito said Sebastian had so much energy tonight. I looked at Liliana, I said, do that. They were just like running around the apartment. I mean, like literally running around this apartment. And I said, are they like this every night? She's like, yeah. And she's like, then they just go right to sleep. <laughs> They're such good boys. They're so sweet. So anyway, Carlitos is so excited about Santa Claus, you know, this year. And just like the look on his face. I said, did you go? Um, I said, I saw that you went and saw Santa Claus. How was it? And he was like, good. And I said, were you scared? And he said, I only got scared when I, I told Santa to have a nice Christmas. And... Um, I said, well, why did you get scared when you told him that? And he said, because he's going to come to our house on Christmas. I said, I know, he is. That's so exciting, isn't it? Sebastian, I don't think, really gets it. <laughs> Although I said to Carlitos, I said, what does Sebastian want for Christmas? And I can't remember what he told us last time, but it's changed. Now he wants the Mickey Mouse house. <laughs> I don't know what that is, the Mickey Mouse house. Oh, my God, so many people commented that it wasn't Daphne Duck, that it was Daisy Duck. <laughs> I guess I did really know that, though. I don't know how I forgot that. Maybe I didn't know it. I don't know. I'm not a big Disney person. I've said that on here before. I'm, like, you know, I've kind of really wanted to get into... Like, Alex loves the Disney movies. I've kind of really wanted to get into the Disney movies and watch them and stuff like that. But I do, and then I just don't love them. <laughs> I'm just like... You know what I mean? Like, I'm just not really a, a kind of... I mean, I think people would assume that I'm kind of somebody that, like, loves musicals and, you know, loves, like, cartoons, dancing cartoons, and that sing and dance. And I, I just don't. Like, that's not really my thing, you know? Give me a good crime drama all day long. Um... Because people are always real surprised. They're like, I can't believe you don't like musicals. I'm like, eh, yeah, I'm not really into the musicals. It's just not my favorite thing. I mean, I like a couple of them. And I think maybe more so because it's like memories that I have associated with it from like my mom and I growing up, you know. And because um, we would like sing them. My mother, she loved, oh my God, she loved musicals. <clears throat> she loved The King and I and she loved Oklahoma. She loved like all the, what is it, the Robertson Hammerstein ones. Is that what it's called? She loved My Fair Lady. I loved My Fair Lady too when I was a kid. And um, I would sit in our living room and I would just uh, sing for hours like I was the main character. What was that one song? How, how many chocolates? Did something that, you know that song? I would just sing that for hours. I'd probably be driving my mom crazy. What is that song now? I can't remember it. I used to sing that all the time. Lots of chocolates for me to eat. Lots of cows. Something, anyway. But do you know that song? I would sing that forever. And, um, but you know, like, I think back in the day, like, me singing those songs, <laughs> I would just, like, sit in our living room and I would put the albums out. And I really did believe I was on a stage. Did you ever do that as a kid? Like, I really believed I was on a stage back in the day. I didn't even need to have anybody looking at me. I was just like performing. I know that's probably hard to believe. Lights are so pretty this year. I was just looking at the calendar when I was um, at the gas station. So I was like, how close are we to Christmas? And I was like, I, it's the fifth or the sixth. And I was like, okay. So we're like 20 days away. We're like less than three weeks away from Christmas. I was like, oh my God. Like, I can't believe that we're less than three weeks away from Christmas. It seems crazy to me. What were some of the other musicals that I liked as a kid? I just was really more like into TV shows. Like, I loved Charlie's Angels. I loved The Love Boat. I loved Fantasy Island. Oh, my God. Fantasy Island was my favorite. And um, I would watch those with my mom every week. We were really big into game shows, too. We would watch a lot of game shows. Um, I mean, 
mean, like junior high and early high school, we watched, you know, Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune, which I think has been on now for 50 years, back to back, but we would watch those. And um, I can't remember what the other ones were that we would watch. But, like, during the day, if I was home from school or if it was in the summer, I liked Sale of the Century. That was one of my favorites. Of course, uh, what's, uh, what's it called? Price is Right. I love The Price is Right. Oh, my God. My grandma was so good at The Price is Right. And uh, I talked about my grandma going to the grocery store. She used to smoke in the grocery store and everything back in the day when people didn't care where you smoked. Do you remember that? Like, it's so bizarre to me when I think about that. People used to smoke in hospitals and stuff. So, anyway... But she would just sit there and shout out every, she knew every answer on The Price is Right, like every number, every price. And uh, Price is Right, and then I love The Family Feud. I still love The Family Feud. I watch it all the time. I think the Game Show Network is really happy. I feel like I'm an advertisement for it. Have you seen the advertisement for it? It's like these people talking and they're like, nothing sad ever happens in the Game Show Network. And they're like, I know, I like it for that reason. I'm like, the advertisement for the Game Show Network. But it's true. Like, <laughs> nothing sad ever happens on the Game Show Network, really. You know, I mean, it's like, let's make a deal. Is that even on there? I think there's like a new, 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 new let's make a deal that sucks. It's horrible. And, um... I think they hand out costumes at the door because they all kind of seem like they're the same kind of costumes. But um, back in the day, the old Let's Make a Deal was fantastic. What else did I used to watch back in the day? I would watch the Jeffersons. I love the Jeffersons. And I loved, oh my God, Good Times. I loved Good Times so much. And um, I would watch One Day at a Time. And I used to watch a lot of those kind of shows. It's like sitcoms back in the day. Sanford and Son. I mean, I watched Roseanne in high school because I was like my mom and I, we watched that together. Um, what else? Now, I just wasn't somebody that watched like, and maybe it was like after me, I don't know, but like Saved by the Bell, like those kind of teeny, teeny, like teeny bopper sh shows, I never watched those. Like, I wasn't into all that. The Brady Bunch, but by the time that I was like old enough to watch a Brady Bunch, it was reruns. So, but I would watch reruns of the Brady Bunch. I don't remember what was on TV when I came home from school. I do know that I would watch those after school specials. I loved those that were like movies based on books. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Oh my God, I loved those so much. And um, on Sundays, Saturdays sometimes, and they would have them too, where it would be like, um, so you would watch cartoons all morning long, right? And then at um, Soul Train would come on. Do you remember that? And when Soul Train came on, you knew the cartoons were over. Well, after Soul Train, okay, they would do this after school special, but it wasn't called after school special. I can't remember. It was called like, it was where they would take a book and they would turn it into um, a movie. And actually, those John Blair's books that I love, like The House, the, well, just came out with it as a movie, The House of the Clock When It's Falls. I remember watching the movie of that. I also remember watching the movie The Great Gilly Hopkins, which was one of my favorite books as a kid growing up. Oh my God, that's so pretty in there. I also remember, it just stopped, I think. I don't, it, it sometimes doesn't beep when it stops. I don't know why. Um, so The Great Gilly Hopkins, I watched. I should read that again sometime. I haven't read that book in so long. And, um, The Homecoming, which I actually bought that a couple years ago. I wanted to reread it, and I haven't done that. And, um, which was, a, this was a different Homecoming. This was a, The Homecoming about the kids that, like, their mom leaves, and they, like, are in this car. Do you know what I'm talking about? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Anyway. Um, and they're trying to find some place to go. And I think, like, the main character's name is Dicey or something like that. But anyway. Dice, Dice or Dicey or something like that. Anyway. But they used to always have those on Saturday afternoons. I think it was after Soul Train. Or maybe it was on a different channel than Soul Train was. But I remember watching Soul Train a lot back in the day. Um, 
So, TV was big in our house growing up. We used to watch a ton of TV. Like, I would go over to other people's houses. Like, there were so many things that were different from my house to yeah, others. <clears throat> other than that my parents were divorced and my mother was an alcoholic. I mean, but like my mom's drinking, I mean, even though I was so aware of it, it wasn't, I wouldn't say, like so many nights she wouldn't start drinking until after I was asleep, if that makes sense. Um, like she would put me to bed, like what, like, you know, when I was younger, 8.39 or something, and then she would start drinking and watch like the evening. I think she could make herself hold it out till then, you know? And so it wasn't like this, I mean, I think sometimes I give this portrayal that my, like, childhood was, like, this miserable, alcoholic child. It wasn't. Like, there were the days that I came home from school and my mom would be completely intoxicated at 3.30 in the afternoon because her friends and her had been hanging out all day long. And then they left and went home and my mom was there just like, obliterated, crying, you know, because <clears throat> she couldn't believe that her life had fallen apart and she wasn't married. And you know what I mean? Like... But that wasn't very often, it really wasn't. And um, so, I mean, there was a lot of like my life that was nice. And I can remember like going over to um, like friends of mine's houses and you know, there was a lot that was similar, but like I can remember one thing was like I would go to people's houses and there would be like no sitting. I remember when I, I realized this and I thought it was weird was that a lot of families didn't sit down together and eat together. And both my mom and my dad were really big about that when I was growing up. Um, my mom was really big about sitting down, saying a prayer, um, and talking about your day for 10 or 15 minutes. Oh my God, I can't believe I forgot this TV show, Little House on the Prairie. <clears throat> we, I've seen every episode of Little House on the Prairie. And um, so, and then we had this little TV, box TV on the end of the table. And like after 10 or 15 minutes, she would say I could turn on the TV because it would be Little House on the Prairie, which I think came on at like seven or something. So we would eat usually. We'd start, we'd sit down and eat about quarter till seven. And, um, and we always had some kind of dessert too. Like that was, like we would sit there for an hour, like, and we would watch the show, we would eat. And you know, the first 15 minutes would be me, you know, how was school? And it wasn't good enough for me just to say, you know, like, oh, school was good today. Well, how was your teacher? She's fine. I mean, like I had to say specific things, you know? And um, then I would, you know, we would um, watch Little House on the Prairie. Then my mom would always make a dessert. And it was always like apple crisp with, you know, vanilla ice cream or, you know, something. I mean, she she made desserts or bought desserts or whatever. We always had some kind of dessert at the end. Um, so it was kind of an event to sit down and have dinner. Like, that was important. And when I went to my dad's house, it was the same thing. Even when my dad was just living in an apartment before he had his house, when he was building his house, um, he had this, like, he had a dining room table. Not a dining room table, but he had, like, a what do you call it, like a woodblock kitchen table. Um, the same that my mom had, he had the exact same one. And it was like, you know, it would fit like four or six people or whatever. And we would sit there and eat dinner. And I mean, he would make like steaks and we used to always have these uh, Stouffer's uh, spinach souffles or he would make wild rice or whatever. And he let me pick out like my favorite cookies, which I've talked about, which were like those grasshopper mint cookies and stuff. <clears throat> I used to also love those sugar wafers, you know, the ones that um, come in vanilla, strawberry, and chocolate, although I, I never liked the chocolate ones. Do you guys know what I'm talking about, those sugar wafers? Oh my God, I love those so much. But anyway, um, so we would have a dinner too, and it was very similar, and I, we would say a prayer, um, and we would sit there and talk about our day, and we didn't watch, my dad and I didn't watch TV. I don't remember there being TV. I remember after dinner we would watch TV, you know, or something, or, you know, we would rent a movie from the movie, like the, the, the movie store. Well, back then it was like, you know, you would rent a movie, like a VCR tape or a Betamax tape, you would rent one. I think we did that on the way home or whatever. But those nights that my dad was with me was not like I was just at his house and he was doing other stuff. Like, he was very attentive. Like, we were sitting there, we were playing a game, or we were, you know, going to, like, a play, or going out to dinner somewhere, or um, cooking at home, or, I mean, it was... And then at my mom's house, you know, there was always, like, take a bath, put your pajamas on every night, and, um... 
pajamas were always kind of very formal in our house. Like, I don't, I, it's funny, like, when I say that to other people and they're like, oh, no, it was always just like, you know, I think we're a generation of, like, basketball shorts, you know, and t-shirts today, but, like, when I was growing up, like, I had to take a bath. I mean, not when I was, you know, <laughs> junior high and stuff, but, like, you know, when I was growing up, like, I would take a bath and then I would put on, like, the button-up pajamas or, you know, I would have the kind that, like, you know, you pulled up and they matched. They were Pac-Man or something like that. You know what I mean? And I always Christmas pajamas. Oh, my God. I always had to have Christmas pajamas. <clears throat> My, my mom would always have some, you know, long nightgown or whatever. And as she got older, it changed. It was funny because she would wear, like, short pajamas, like, men's pajamas. But they weren't. They were, like, women's pajamas from, like, Victoria's Secret. But they were, like, the short ones that buttoned up. And then she'd have, like, a long, like, you know, not silk robe, but, like, some nice robe, you know. And that's what she would wear. I remember we would go stay in hotels together and um, we'd always get rooms like right next to each other or like, you know, across from each other and she'd come like knock on my door. <laughs> so sometimes I would take my mom to Southern Indiana. There used to be a Caesars Indiana here and I think it's now a Harris or something. I don't know. But it's like right by Louisville, Kentucky. So like I would take my mom down there for a night, you know, like if we just wanted to get away, I would drive her down there and, um, this is when I was with my ex, and sometimes he would go, and sometimes he wouldn't, but, um, <clears throat> so, you know, I was, like, I had, you know, sometimes I would get these comps rooms and whatever, so I would, like, you know, take her down there, and I'd be, like, okay, we're gonna get a room, we're gonna go eat, you know, at the buffet or the steakhouse or whatever, and then, you know, we'll do a little gambling, and then we'll come back, and we'll watch, like, a room, a movie in the room. I loved that they had those on-demand movies, do you know what I'm talking about? Not on-demand, what are they called? Um... The, like the movies in the room that you can buy, but they were movies always that like weren't out on DVD yet, but they had just left the movie theater or they were still in the movie theater. So they were like really new movies. Literally, I am. this is probably something I haven't talked about on here. I don't know, maybe I have. Maybe I've talked about it in, regarding Vegas. I don't know, because I don't, I never see hotels that do this anymore. I never see them in hotel rooms. Anywhere we go, no hotel room has them. I used to literally, the first thing I would do when I, because I love hotel rooms. I, I could live in hotel rooms for the rest of my life. I love them so much. The first thing I would do when I got into a hotel room was turn on the TV and see what the movies were that you could, I, true story, true story. Um, when was the last time that we did that though? Because, I mean, it's been since I've been with Alex because I can remember renting some movies. Where did we go that it was like that? Maybe Atlanta? for Tomorrow World a couple years ago. I don't know. But I feel like maybe it was Atlanta. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? The movies you can rent in the room. So anyway. I would always be so excited. They'd have something on there that I wanted to see forever. And, um, but anyway. So my mom was so cute like I would say well you know change into your pajamas and then come over and then we'll watch like a movie in you know the room in my room and um and then we can go to bed or whatever this was like after the casino and all that kind of stuff so she would go over and she would put her pajamas on when we were at like the buffet like we would usually go to the buffet and she'd say I just feel so bad and I'm like why and she'd say because this buffet is so expensive and you can't take any of the food home and I'd say Mom, it's a buffet. I will sit here for as long as you want. You can go up and you can try every dessert because she'd always want to try all the desserts, right? You know? And, um, <coughs> and I'd say, you can try whatever you want to try and I'll just sit here, Mom. You know, it's like I can have a cup of coffee. It's whatever. And of course, I was huge back then too, so it wasn't like I was just making one trip to the buffet. Let's be for real. So anyway, um, so she'd say, are you sure? Like, don't you, do you think they would care if I took food home? I'm like, mom, it's a buffet, okay? You don't take food home from the buffet. So we would, she would come and knock on my door, right? And, or I would go over to her room. And I can remember like this one time I went over to her room and she was putting pajamas on and she had this like uh, plate, like, you know, like the plates where they have like the cups and the saucers for like coffee. And she had all these cookies laid out on it. And I go, mother, where did you get those cookies? And she goes, oh, from the buffet. I didn't think they would care if I brought them home. I was like, mom. Or she would come across the room in like, you know, the hotel room and she would have like this plate of like desserts that she had brought home or, you know, it just, it cracked me up or egg rolls or something, you know, that she was going to eat while we watched a movie. I'm like, oh God, mom. <laughs> Those were some fun nights. Those were really fun nights. I remember.
remember one time, my ex and I, I was so excited because the Lord of the Rings movie came out, and it was like the first one, and we watched it in some hotel room, I can't remember, and I was so excited. We had watched this whole thing, and I thought it was so boring, okay? I thought I've never read the Lord of the Rings. I don't have any desire to read Lord of the Rings. If you like them, hey, more power to you. But I was so not interested in this shit, right? And But I'm like sitting there watching it and watching it. And I'm like, oh my God, how is this thing going to possibly ever end? And I remember at the end of it, it's like they're just kind of like walking up the side of this like pill mountain thing. And I go, what is going on? And he goes, well, I mean, this is just the first of installments. There's like, I go, well, when's the next installment come out? And he goes like in three years. I said, are you fucking kidding me? I was so mad. I was so mad. I was like, did I just wait, waste three and a half hours of my life? And let me just tell you, I have never watched the rest of that series either. It was such a waste of my time. I was so mad. If you watch my booktube videos, you know I'm not big on cliffhangers, okay? Although, earlier in the year, I did read this book called... Shoot. Something Truly Devious, okay? By Maureen... If you guys want a good mystery, but it's young adult, it's called Truly Devious, and it's the first part of a series by Maureen Johnson, I think. It's by Maureen Johnson. She's the one that writes with John Green sometimes. But anyway, she's also been in a bunch of anthologies. It was such a great, like, uh, beginning of a series, but it's totally a cliffhanger. I mean, it leaves you literally... Like, you think you're about to find out what's happening, and then it just stops like that. And I was like, are you kidding me that you are doing this? Like, seriously? So, but anyway, um, I do kind of like the cliffhangers when they're, like, something that I'm really into, and that you can go and, like, you know what I mean? Like, if it's a TV show, and you're on Netflix, and then you can, like, there's a cliffhanger, and then you can go, like, watch the very next episode. I like that. But I don't like it if you have to wait for three years. My God, you know? I feel like in some of these houses I'm looking in, people just have these ginormous Christmas trees that are literally like 15 to 20 feet high. Do you have a Christmas tree that big in your house? I've never had a Christmas tree that big in my house. My dad, now, they, us they usually always decorate a lot for Christmas outside and stuff, but their Christmas tree in their house is probably, oh, well, maybe seven, eight feet tall. Well, they do two. They do one in their living room and they do one in their kitchen. The kitchen's like smaller, but it's pretty. It's like more like, you know, kind of like country, country stuff. They have it next to the fireplace in the kitchen. I need to find out what we're doing for Christmas. I need to call my dad. I talked to him last week. got me laughing so hard on the phone. My dad is so funny. Oh. I've been like trimming my beard more. Have you guys noticed it hasn't been bothering my, bothering my nose as much when I talk? I've like been trying to be really careful of keeping this like short, but now it's like right around the corners of my mouth that are driving me crazy. Should we talk about like what you guys, like uh, some gifts for Christmas? Okay. Well, of course, I think cologne is always a nice Chris, a gift for Christmas, but it is rather boring, don't you think? Um, I mean, I love cologne because then I like, you know, it lasts forever, but I just think like when you open it, it's like after that immediate, like, oh, thanks, you know? I think like the ultimate Christmas gift to buy, uh, you know, like your boyfriend, husband, dad, or what, is something that is like kind of different that they wouldn't think of that then they can kind of like play with a little bit you know what I mean too but then like also has purpose I think as far as like girlfriends I think that like like spa days like let's go get our pedicure together and write up a little coupon for that I'll pay you to get your pedicure or your manicure or whatever right and we'll go get that done for a day and then I'll take you out to lunch like that's nice or like a wine date or something like that I think like that's nice 
Um, I like spending time with my friends. So whenever, whenever my friends are like, okay, like, well, here's what we're going to do for Christmas. I'm going to take you and, um, like, they don't even have to, like, put it in a card or anything, you know? Like, Tanya, she'll be like, hey, like, I'm, we're going to go get pedicures. I'm going to take you. And then we're going to go get, you know, like, the, the foot massages at the foot massage place afterwards. And then go get dinner or something like that, you know? Like, or I'll do the same thing for her or whatever. Um. Like, those are, I think, amazing Christmas presents. Because I like spending time with people. You know what I mean? And I think today in our society, we're just, like, not so much a society where we spend as much time with each other as we used to. Don't you agree? Like, I feel like we just don't, you know? And, um, I'd rather spend time with somebody than, I mean, I don't even, hell, they don't even have to pay for it. You know what I mean? I'll pay for my end. It's just like I want to spend time with people. But, um. is actually really good. Do you ever, like, go places and you think to yourself, like, oh, they're, these are really great gifts. Um, but, like, I, I'll never remember this at Christmas. Okay, so Alex is always really good at buying little things. But they're, like, things you wouldn't think of that are really cute. And, um, one of the places that he always goes is Urban Outfitters. So, I don't know if you have an Urban Outfitters near you, but if you do, like, their gift section is, like, pretty unbelievable. They have, like, a really good, like, jewelry section for women. They have, I mean, for men, too, they have some cool jewelry. Jewelry. They also have hats, fanny packs, backpacks. I mean, if you just want to buy something that's not clothes, right? But then they also have this incredible book section. They also have albums there that are, like, newer albums, but, like, you know, and, um, they just have really, really cool stuff there. And, um, so yeah. And Alex always buys me stuff from there. They also have, like, great beauty products there. Um, I mean, they're not, like, the best, but they're not the worst either. And they have, like, really kind of some fun palettes, like makeup palettes and stuff in there. I've looked at it through all of them. Or lipsticks, bath bombs, face masks. They always have really fun stuff in there. So, I don't know. You could, like, get your friend a fanny pack and then buy them, you know, some different makeup products. And their makeup stuff is not expensive there. Like, you could get face masks. And, I mean, they have some stuff that's kind of expensive, but... You could probably buy like three or four different kinds of face masks, like a bath bomb, and put it in a fanny pack and call it a day. And that would be like a $20 gift. You know what I mean? And I think that's real fun. Everybody wants a fanny pack. Fufu tonight, we were talking about fanny packs at dinner, and he was like, oh my God, in San Diego, everybody uses fanny packs. And Alex said, well, Peter's bought about 15 this year. I have, too. I have bought so many, and I don't use them. Like, I really don't. Like, I need to start using them on a daily basis instead of carrying my backpack around. I think I just use my backpack because it's so convenient. But I do love fanny packs. I mean, the backpack's convenient because it just always has my stuff in it. You know what I mean? But, like, um... But the fanny packs are convenient. And Fufu was like, yeah, and they also wear them, like, across their shoulders, too. They don't wear them, like, around their, you know, waist always. Am I so corny that I could just drive around and look at Christmas lights all night? Like, I just think it's so pretty. straightened up, which I've been working on, I also need to get our upstairs closet going. See, if I could get that closet, like, straightened out, especially now, because I'm, like, starting to, like, try on shirts to wear to things, and my shirts are, like, really starting to fit, and I'm like, oh, damn, I'm starting to get into some clothes that I haven't been able to fit into in, like, a couple years, you know what I mean? And I have clothes that I bought that I have never worn. I have, like, all these clothes that I bought that I've never worn, and I'm like, um, this is kind of cool. Like, it's like I have all these clothes that I just... Okay, now they're there waiting for me if I keep on losing the weight, which obviously I'm going to because I'm dead... I haven't talked a whole lot about my weight loss tonight, have I? Um, I know that, like, people... I, I know people like to hear it and that there's other people that are doing it with me and that is just so cool, I think. But I also know it's overkill for the people that aren't. And um, somebody said that the other night on my vlog, like... Uh, and I really took this into consideration when they said it. They said, I love you talking about all the weight loss stuff and I'm really proud of you or happy for you. I'm just paraphrasing this, but they said, but all the talk about food made me hungry and I'm trying to lose weight too. And you know what? Like, 
It's so like a newcomer going to a meeting and them saying all you guys talk about is drugs and alcohol. It is very similar to that. So if I get on here and every night all I'm talking about is food, for those of us that are trying to lose weight, it's going to be kind of hard. I totally understand that. So I'm going to try not to do that as much. Um, I mean, I'm still going to talk about food on here, but I'm going to try not to talk about it as much. So to that person out there, I can't remember who you are. I'm sorry. Like, I'm the exact same way. You know, it's like whenever I'm trying to lose weight, everybody around me wants to talk about like what their favorite Christmas cookie is or something. You know what I mean? Um, which I guess I have talked a little bit about food tonight, but anyway, um, I just had an image flash in my head of my mom's chili and orange muffins, but we're raw apple muffins, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> I said I was going to talk about food. But anyway, I need to clean out my closet and Alex, oh my God, I come in the other day even know where I was like I had gone to like for like two hours to go like run some errands and go to the store and stuff and I came home he completely cleaned out his side of the closet I mean completely like I if, if you had asked me before when I was looking at his side of the closet I would have said okay that's a 12-hour job right I come home in two hours he's completely redone his shoes he's like gotten like bagged up stuff that he wants to take to the goodwill I'm like oh my god his closet is spotless and mine is like you can't even see some of my shoes the pile is so high and it goes for so long I've got clothes so packed in there, um, and it's not about me being a hoarder. It's about the fact that, like, I don't want to throw something away that I could fit into in six months, and then I'm like, damn, I wish I hadn't thrown that away. So I need to get it, and, like, the stuff that I just, I literally cannot fit into right now, and I need to take that stuff um, down into the basement so that I can um, make room for the closet up there. Then, if I do that, see... I have like built-in shelves in my closet, um, so I could have like the fanny packs up there or the, see, I always kind of dream of having that closet, you know what I mean? Where you have the fanny packs and you have the hats and then you have like the sunglasses and you have sections for all that. I think that would be really nice, you know what I mean? And then you could go in there and you could go, oh, okay, well, this is the fanny pack that I'm going to use for the day and then with this hat and I mean, I have so many baseball hats and trucker hats, you guys, that I mean, you have never seen, that have never made it to this video or these videos because they're just like pushed all the way back in there and I buy them and I wear them like once or twice and then I don't wear them again. And I think that if I saw them, like if they were out, I probably would wear them more, you know what I mean? But because they're not like out, um, I'm not wearing them because I don't see them. Like I was thinking about this fanny pack that I bought from Urban Outfitters that's kind of like that, uh, what do you call it? Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. It's like green, it's like army green. I showed it on here. It's like... Okay, it turned off, and then it's, like, really hot, so not that it matters in this camera, but I was like, you know what? I think that I'm going to let it just, like, cool down for a little bit. It's right on top of my heater, of course. I've talked about that before. But anyway, uh, I was listening to a little Kelly Clarkson, Reba McIntyre, Silent Night. Um, but I was talking about, like, that cinchilla. It's, like, cinchilla or fleece, or is it called cinchilla? Do we call them that? I don't know, but anyway. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's, like, that fleece material. But I have an army green one that I got at Urban Outfitters. I have not used it once since I bought it. Nor have I used the Vans one that I bought in Miami. Alex used, has used that a couple times, but I haven't used it at all. And, um... I don't know. I just think that the fanny packs are so much fun. I thought they were so corny for so long, but I think they're kind of fun now. And, um... So, I want to get some more fanny packs. <laughs> the thing is that, I mean, you can spend a lot of money on them. I think I've spent like 40 bucks on like a Patagonia one. I have two Patagonia ones. I have an L.L. Bean one. Those are the ones that I have bought for music festivals the last couple years. And, um, and then I've just bought cheap ones from like Target. You can get them at Target for like 10 bucks. They're like black and you know, green, and they have all different colors. I think in the women's section, they even have, like, ones that are, like, more fun, but, um, so, yeah, I mean, I just, I, do you guys do you use fanny packs at all? I think they're fun. I like them. They're perfect for, like, putting your wallet in and, like, you know, like, a lip balm and, uh, you know, your keys and stuff like that. And a couple of mine, like, I can put my camera in there, too, so I can take my camera places, and then it's like, you know, if I, I need my camera, I wanted to whip it out, but I haven't done that, so. 
but you can put your phone in there and stuff too. The other thing is like, especially like at music festivals, you can like put it like right in front and then like, it's not like somebody's gonna get into your, you know, stuff with you right there. And I also like the ones that inside, like they have an inside pocket that zips because you can put like your money and your ID or your wallet in there or whatever. And um, then, there's really, I mean, unless somebody takes your fanny pack, which they would have to unclip from you and take, there's really no way for them to get your stuff. You know what I mean? Like when you're moving through like really tight crowds at like a concert or a music festival. So anyway, anyway, I like them. I think they're fun. I also like messenger bags and Alex years ago bought me that Gucci messenger bag, which is really nice. I really like that bag, but I'm just, I mean, look at me. Like, it's not like I'm just gonna, you know, every once in a while I do, like, throw the messenger bag, like, you know, over my shoulder and I'll, like, you know, go shopping or whatever. But, um, I think if I was thinner, I would. It's just, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why that has anything to do with it, but. There are some messenger bags out there that I think are gorgeous that I would love to have. The one thing about the messenger bag that he gave me, though, it, like, it folds over and then it has, like, it doesn't even have, like, a clasp. It just has, like, this metal, like, this magnetized thing that goes together. And so, um, he got, like, the, the wallet that I have matches it. It has, like, a little pocket inside where, like, this wallet fits perfect in it. And, um, but... I think that was the year, like, <laughs> we both wanted, like really nice messenger bags and I got him a Louis Vuitton one and he got me the Gucci one. But anyway, we don't really buy each other gifts like that anymore. We just don't need them. I think like the older you get, I don't know. Like, I, it's not that I wouldn't buy those things, you know? Like I would, to be honest with you, there's like, I would love to have like a Gucci or a Louis Vuitton backpack, but I just don't need it, you know? And could I save my money and like, you know, eventually buy one? Sure. I mean, but like, I just think that's a lot of money to spend on that stuff. If I was making, you know, such a, such amount of money where it just was like a drop in the hat for me, yeah, I would do that. Like, you know, but, um, or I would buy it for Alex. I probably would be more inclined to buy stuff like that for Alex because I love to buy people gifts. I love to buy Alex gifts, you know, and stuff like that. And my family and friends and Tanya and stuff. I just, I don't know. I just realized I don't really need a whole lot of that stuff. You know what I mean? But I do kind of like bags, like backpacks and messenger bags and fanny packs. Like, I like bags and hats. I actually was on the D-squared uh, website today looking at all their hats because I was like, okay, I've had this Icon hat since August. And I spent quite a bit of money on it. But at the same time, um, I've worn it literally like every day. And I was like, I could probably invest in another hat, you know, and have like two nice hats. There weren't really any hats on there that I wanted. <laughs> I was like... And when I was getting my light bulbs changed last night, I forgot. Oh, I bought this the same day that I bought the fanny pack at Urban Outfitters. I have this Patagonia hat. And now that I'm losing weight, these Patagonia hats might start fitting me a little bit better. Uh, maybe not yet. I like when hats fit like trucker hats. I don't like when they're like pulled way down. Two, three, four. I don't love this hat. I don't know, it looks cuter in the store. I tried it on and Alex was like, I love that hat, that looks so good on you. No, I don't think it does. Do you know what's so weird is that, um, air conditioning didn't work but my heat is like unbelievable in here it's like one second it's like 60 and the next second it's like 100 I have to constantly turn it down but back in the day I never like all my friends <clears throat> this was probably the year or two before I um like got sober like, all of my friends that we would hang out together and go out to, like, the gay bars and stuff, like, very much the look at that time was, 
like construction or work boots with like jeans that had holes in the knees, white t-shirts, flannels, like over, you remember like flannels or like flannels with the, the I think this look is kind of coming back a little bit actually. Uh, flannels with like the shoulders ripped off or black t-shirts underneath the white or black t-shirts and then um, like baseball hats. And they would always be from like, you know, Abercrombie or like the hats, Abercrombie or, you know, Aeropostale or something like that. And I would never, usually Abercrombie, I would never wear the hats. Like I just, I always thought I looked so bad in hats back then. And, um, and towards the end of it, I had long hair. So I just always wore my hair like, you know, usually in a ponytail or like, <clears throat> I, I wore it all different kinds of ways. But anyway, um, but like in a, parted down the middle in a ponytail or in a little bun, I would wear it. It's usually how I wore it. And, um, but that was at the very end that my hair was like long enough to be like that. My hair like flipped out forever. <laughs> But do you remember that look back in the day? Oh my God. And then before that, I would say like the year before that, the look was very much like blue jeans or black jeans with like a white shirt or black t-shirt from the Gap, like the single, you know, pocket tees like tucked in. And then you would wear like the black combat boots or Doc Martens. It was very like that look when we would go out or like shirts buttoned all the way up to the top. I feel like a lot of these kind of like style things are coming back. This is why I have a hard time throwing out my clothes, right? Because I love clothes. I love, 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 love clothes. And, you know, I've been so heavy for the last, you know, shit, six or seven years that I haven't been able to wear anything that's in my closet. And so it literally has been t-shirt, baseball hat, t-shirt, do your hair, t-shirt or this, oversized sweater or hoodie. You know, I haven't really got to wear any of the clothes that are like cute. And I'm like, I'll be damned if I'm gonna throw this stuff out before I can actually wear it. You know what I mean? Like some of this, like I said, a lot of this stuff I bought and I never even got to use it. I kind of think I get that from my mom a little bit. Like, my dad is very much of the attitude of, um, like, you can't, you can't take it with you, right? So, um, if you're going to get something or you're going to do something, like, use it. You know what I mean? But my mom was very different from that. And she would, like, buy things. Like, and my mom, I think, because... She came from such a poor background, but like she had really educated herself through the years on like what were na nice brands of like towels or sheets or something like that, or a jacket. You know, she liked like high end stuff. And so she would like, my mother was a clearance shopper like nobody's business. There's a store here in Indianapolis, it's called Tuesday Morning. I don't know if it's a chain, it may be other states, I don't know. But it's all like, it's kind of like a smaller version of like TJ Maxx, if that makes sense. My mom would, like, go there, like, there was, like, one day a week, like, Mondays or Wednesdays or whatever, when it was, like, like, super clearance. So, you could go in there, and let's say if you got, like, I don't know, let's say if Ralph Lauren, like, a duvet, like, a white lace duvet cover and shams was, like, $600, okay, you could get it in Tuesday morning for, like, let's say $300, okay? But then you could go in there, and then, like, you would also get coupons in the mail that would be, like, 20% off. And then maybe like on a Monday or Wednesday when it was also clear and she could get like another 30% off. So you could end up getting literally, okay, nothing wrong with these sets. They weren't like, they weren't like something was wrong, the stitching was wrong. They were just, you know, they weren't factory aired or whatever. You could literally get like $600. And my aunt used to do this shit too. That's why everything in my aunt's house always looks so perfect. You could get like Ralph Lauren and shams and a duvet cover that were like $600 and end up paying like literally like $75 for it. And my mother would do this, right? But she wouldn't use it. She would like keep it in her closet. I found so many things that my mother had that she never used. When she passed away and I had like started dating Alex and I had not gone through this one closet in the hallway. So when you come to the top of the stairs, there's a closet right there. It's like our linen closets where we keep like all of our sheets and stuff. Well, I didn't really go through there um, because like I hadn't really been staying there a whole lot. You know what I mean? So I started like going back and forth, but I would like wash the same pair of sheets and then like I would put them back on the bed. I would wash the same pair of sheets and I would put them on the bed. 
Well, Alex was there one night, and he was like, this was probably like a month, I don't know, after we started dating sometime, and he was like, wanting another blanket or something, and so he got in that closet, and he was like, what is all this stuff? We found all of the stuff that my mother had that she, like, literally was still in the bags that she had never used, and, um... She had this entire, and it wasn't, it was not masculine at all, but we used it for a long time because it was so nice. She had an entire set of Halston stuff for her bed, okay? Sheets, bed, like, uh, what do you call it? Um, bed skirt, shams, duvet cover, comforter, blanket. We still use the, the blanket on our bed because it's PP's favorite blanket. It's real soft. And, like, it's very, very soft, and PP loves it, and so, like, and it's, like, this white material, and it has these, like, just very, like, soft yellow flowers on it, and, um, I mean, it's, like I said, not masculine at all, but, um, so, yeah, I was actually, the other day, I was looking through, uh, what was the, oh, I know half of you out there, probably 80% of you know, Elm, something Elm, do you guys know, West Elm, I was looking through West Elm, there are, their, uh, what do you call it? Sale stuff is pretty good. They were like, so for Christmas, I want to get, like, I want to redo the bedroom, I told you, but I want to get, I don't know if I'll do it for Christmas or maybe the new year. Maybe we'll wait until the new year sales go and then Alex and I can go pick this stuff out together. But I want to do, um, I want to get nightstands and uh, lamps and then I want to get a new comforter. I want to get a, uh, like a California King down comforter and I want to get a really nice duvet comforter cover. And part of why is so that we can just like throw it up there and it can look really nice and then it'll look like, I mean, he, Alex does not love a made bed. We were talking about that tonight at dinner. Sarah and Fufu both were like, oh my God, I hate making the bed. And Fufu was talking about how he and his girlfriend, like, sometimes, like, they argue because she likes a made bed. I said, Fufu, it's not worth it. <laughs> I said, listen, I said, I had to give that one up with Alex because he hates getting into him. I mean, Alex literally does not like getting into a bed that is made. When we go to, like, stay in, like, a hotel, like, he'll pull up, like, the ends of, like, the bed and everything. I'm like, oh, my God, it looks so nice. <laughs> but, um, I just want to get, like, a big down comforter, and then I want to get a, uh, what do you call it? Like, some kind of, like, gray or flannel. I don't know. I looked at all these different things on West Elm. There was this one that was beautiful. It was, like, this gray herringbone, but, and it was, like, oh, my God, it was, like, 80 bucks for a duvet, for a King, California King duvet cover. That's pretty cheap, okay? And, um, but it was sold out. I couldn't believe it, and I like, I mean, I, I would have paid more for that because I loved the material, but it was sold out, um, so anyway, I don't know. It's kind of fun to do all that, but I do like I want to, and we want to get one of those huge mirrors, you know, to like lean up against the wall. Um, but anytime like I see them at my friend's house, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Like those eight foot mirrors, and then like people just have them like leaning up against the wall. Like we have a big wall in our bedroom that we want to do that, and um, and Alex really wants one of those mirrors. But my friends are always like, oh, I got that, like, on West Elm, or I got that on whatever that other website is like that, and I only paid, like, 120 bucks. I get on there, and I look at them, and they're, like, $1,200, and I'm like, you didn't pay $100 for this. People must just be on these websites all the time looking for sales. Like, maybe that's what I need to do. Do you guys do that? Like, are you on there all the time looking for sales? Maybe I need to do it. Maybe I'd catch that stuff a little bit more. It's fun to look at that stuff, though. Oh, my God. Have I been talking another 15 minutes? What the hell? <laughs> what the hell? Hell's bells. I think it's going to be a total family weekend, which I'm kind of excited about. I had fun tonight. Fufu's going with Liliana and the kids tomorrow to the Children's Museum. He's real excited about it. I said, well, that'll be fun. He's like, yeah, I think it will be, too. It's, like, so cozy and homey when, like, all the family's together, you know? There's, like, no pressure to do anything. I don't know, like... I'm not talking about my dad's side of the family, because, like, I didn't see them very, you know, like, my extended family. My dad and my stepmom, like, they were real casual, but, like, my extended family, like, I didn't see them, but, like, maybe, you know, I don't know, once a year or, like, every other year when I was growing up. Um, 
for like some major holiday and it was usually like Easter or Fourth of July. My dad would have everybody down to his house from Fort Wayne. And um, so that would have been like after I was 12. Before that, we would go up to like visit my grandma and stuff. You know, like I don't know, a couple times a year or whatever, but like my mom's side of the family, like Car and Caroline and I have talked about this recently, like because Caroline, <laughs> like her stepson and his wife, like they're so cool, and like they bring games over. So like when he came in for Thanksgiving, he was like telling David, Caroline's son, my camera is so hot right now, you guys. He was telling David, Caroline's son, he was like, okay, so I just brought the new, bought the new dot 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 game. And David was like, oh, really? And he was like, yeah, we're going to play it. And it was like, literally, he bought this new game. So, like, they sat down there, and before we left, like, he and his wife and David and Alex were playing this game while Caroline and I were just kind of sitting there talking for a little bit. And I was like, how late will they stay? And she said, and this was like, I mean, if you watch our Thanksgiving thing, we went over to um, Carlos's house at, like, 7 or 7-something. Seven and she said, oh, they'll probably stay till, like, 1, 12 or 1, and we'll play games and stuff. I said, seriously? She's like, oh, yeah, we'll sit around all night long and play different games and cards. So it's real fun. We'll put a movie on in the background and whatever. I'm so happy for Caroline for that, you know? Because when we were growing up, like, our holidays, although they were beautiful, I mean, they literally were, like, Miracle on 34th Street, you know, holidays. They just were beautiful. But they were very adult. There was a lot of drinking. They were, like, basically, like, adult cocktail parties, you know, but around the holidays. And, I mean, beautiful din dinners and stuff like that. I mean, my mom and my aunt did such a fantastic job for holidays for us. I mean, they were just magical. They were absolutely magical, you know? But, um... At the same time, there were, like, no other kids there. It was just, it was very adult. And, um, you know, and Caroline and I would, like, be dressed very nice and just sitting there, you know, and reading little books on the floor or whatever. She and I would play with the Fisher-Price people in the other room or whatever. But, um, and, like, even as we got older, like, even just till the last couple years, you know, it was like we would sit down and everybody would have, like, a drink or a soda or a cup of coffee. And we'd talk for 20 minutes to half an hour and then dinner and then everybody would kind of like leave you know like I've talked about that on here before well like that's why I'm happy for Caroline that she has something different because like you know she even has said in the past like we just rush through everything and then everybody goes home and it's like why do we even get together you know and um and I love her so much and like we she and I like didn't get to spend that much time together and it would just be like the holidays when we got to see each other which is why we were trying to make more of a you know effort to see each other and stuff because of that and hang out longer which is like I, we got there I was so happy that we just kind of hung out at her house this year you know it was so nice there was like no pressure and we just kind of hung out and but like hanging out with Alex's family is so much like that like I walked in tonight you know <laughs> it's like um I come in and like Alex or Fufu and his mom are like on one couch and they're just like laying up on each other and um, Alex and Liliana are like, Alex is showing Liliana something on the phone and the kids are wrestling on the floor and Alex's uncle is sitting at the dining room table and um, and they're all like, hey! And so, like, I came over, you know, and I, like, plugged in my phone and charged it. And I was just, like, laying there. And, you know, the kids came over. And they were telling me about seeing Santa Claus and stuff. And, um, you know, then Liliana was asking me some stuff. She said, oh, my God, you've lost so much weight. <laughs> She's the only one that seems to notice in the family. But it doesn't matter. So, anyway. Um, but, you know, it was nice. It's just so relaxed. We just kind of hang out, you know. And sometimes I have to say... Like, it is too much. Like, it's it's so, like, so many hours on end that it kind of, like, I, I guess I'm just, I'm still getting used to that a little bit. But, like, they don't even care. Like, I could fall asleep just sitting there. They wouldn't even care. You know what I mean? So, it's nice. It's just so relaxed. So, it'll be a fun weekend. So tomorrow night, I don't know, he, Alex, we're going out to dinner with Melissa and Jason, and then Alex said that he's going to go do something with his mom and Fufu after that. I don't know what, because that'll probably be late, like 9 or 10 or something, maybe even later than that. And then, um, I probably won't do something with them tomorrow night, just because I'll be tired by the time we get done with dinner, and I'll want to come home and take the dogs out and stuff like that. And then Friday, we're going over there at 7.30. I don't know if we're doing the Pacer game on uh, Saturday night or not. And then Sunday, Alex is doing something with his mom. So Friday, probably something on Saturday, I'm assuming we'll do with Fufu. He's like, I just want to hang out with the family all weekend. He was telling us all about...
all about San Diego and how much he loves it out there. It sounds expensive to live. I mean, I mean, I've had so many friends of mine that have lived on the West Coast, and at first they'll talk about how expensive it is, but then they kind of play it down. I'm like, <laughs> I totally take for granted how cheap it is to live in the Midwest, okay? Or I should say, in a city like Indianapolis, let me just tell you. But our cost of living here compared to like San Diego is ridiculous. It is like so, like it is cheap to live in Indianapolis. Like you can live nice in Indianapolis for cheap, you know? Not cheap, but not like what they pay. Oh my God. And Sarah, you know, moved here from LA. So she was talking about like the cost of living in LA and all that kind of stuff. So it was interesting to hear all that and hear, you know, the different, how much this costs versus how much that costs and all that kind of stuff. But. All right, listen, you guys, I think I'm going to listen to a little bit of my Harry Potter audible audiobook, and um, then I'm going to go home and get some sleep. I'm going to turn around up here and head back while I'm listening to it and start uploading my video tonight. I know you guys like it when I get them up earlier, so maybe I'll try to get it up earlier tomorrow. But anyway, um, okay, I love you. I hope you guys are having a fantastic Thursday. It's almost the weekend, and um, I love you, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.